Hey guys, my name is Rudy, and today we're going to talk about adding a pinball to your arcade 1UP. So, what we're going for is something like this. Just got to show you what it looks like here. Now, I didn't say I was any good, but here's what's going on. So, for the last couple of weeks, or maybe a couple months, I've been working on showing guys how to build the arcade one up, how to modify it, but I've already had my stuff built for a few months now. So what I'm looking for now is, I want to show you guys how to build a pinball machine. Now, a lot of the guys go out there and they go to extreme, but see, for me, I don't have a lot of room. So, I want to just add one more thing to my multifunctional cabinet. So, let's get started. Alright. I'm just kidding. Not even me be that crazy. Alright, here's what we're going to do. First, we're going to power this thing down here. I'll bring this in a little closer. Let's see what I'm actually working on. Okay, so originally the machine was operated, the two flippers were one here and the other one here, and the launcher would be right here. Now, if you're doing that, I'll show you here a little closer. Left flipper, right flipper, launcher. I didn't really like that. So today we're going to work on wiring up an actual pinball side button. We're going to leave the launcher. I really don't want to drill into this right here. I just, uh, not right now anyway. Now for me modifying this, I know I'm going to hear a lot of, a lot of complaints on, um, oh man, I'm really torturing this machine. Well, you're kind of sort of right in a way. But, Here's the most important thing. So here's how you kind of do this setup. You guys see my boards. What I'm looking for is it's part math, which I'm not so good at, and part just positioning. So a typical pinball machine, you want to put your arms around the machine just like you did back in the day. My fingers would typically be right about here. And same thing on the other side. I want to kind of figure where I'm at. Then I actually went out and measured it. And what I did is I have a, a little roll here. And I used this to build all my holes that I didn't get laser cut. And I found where I wanted to be and I drew a circle with a Sharpie around the area. So it's just on the inside. And I marked it on the other side as well. And then I went ahead and I measured out distance from the top. Distance from the top, and incredibly, by my terrible math skills, I actually got it pretty close. The next thing I did is I'm using, and I'm getting my money's worth out of this cool little device that I bought. This little keyhole saw. Now, what I did is I went ahead and I checked to make sure the fitting works. So I'm going to show you that as well. My favorite arcade buttons are this screw on tight. Here they are. I'll put it in the hole. Fits pretty snug. And that's kind of what we're going for. I also chose black because black is a little bit easier to hide from the rest of that. I don't want anything like orange or yellow or anything like that. And so what I did so far, I'll show you some of the parts that I've kind of gathered. And I did cheat just slightly. I did prepare, did prepare a couple items here. Um, I told you guys in previous videos that this is the card I use for all my other stuff. It's not really required. One thing that we want to keep is you definitely want to keep a good stash of spare parts. So I didn't want to waste one that one. I chose this one here. And this one came with some horrible connectors like these. These are too small to actually fit on to this. 
So I went ahead and I cut the ends off and I joined it together. So here's the end right there. Here's where it's spliced. And if you look at the top, I got the top and the first tab here on top soldered in. And make sure you didn't overheat it. You should still get a good solid clicking sound. You could use some of these other ones, but I was afraid these would just fall out. I may use some of the springs because I think this might be the one time that I might need stronger springs for the pinball. And like I said, I ordered those two switches, which came with these. So without further ado, let's get this party started, as my friend says. Okay. I'm going to pull my board up. And I've got plenty of room and plenty of slack in here, so I can shovel it in here without breaking anything. That would not be the case with my cabinet. And again, I'm going to go through and I'm going to measure the end of the hole here that I marked. And it looks good. And this is the moment that I'm mostly afraid of. But here we go. So, I've got my circle lined up. You can barely see it. It's right here. Make sure I have plenty of room so I don't knock out the top because this is already a pretty weak structure. Here we go. Oh. take out some of the stuff here we're definitely going to need to vacuum the inside of this and now we're going to move all our electronics over to the other side spin this baby around and my mark is right here we're going to do the same thing on this side make sure you guys can see okay here we go okay make sure i'm squared here we go Of wood stuck in the deal here. Might not be this here, so we're gonna retighten this. This is the beauty of doing something live. <laughs> but trust me, this was definitely. Okay, so it's not gonna go. So what we need to do is this is pretty warm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab it carefully. out real quick gonna remove the piece of wood cardboard or whatever you want to call it and we're gonna very quickly reassemble it because it's pretty warm you don't want to wait on this too long because it is compressed wood That's the way it should have went the first time. Okay. Next step. Like I said, label everything. So we're going to grab my left flipper, query cable. Still feel pretty good that I got it in the right spot here. See if the hole is not too big, hopefully. We may have to, it goes right in, it actually falls right in. But it's enough room for it to keep it from actually going all the way through. At probably a later time, I may have to get a uh, something to keep it from uh, going all the way in. But for now, I think we're okay. Oh, and I 
Now once we clean this up, it's pretty well hidden in here. It's not that not that bad. Okay. Want to get the snug? Then what we want to do is down here. I can show you on this one. Is you want to find the right angle. Okay. So we want to get the top of this piece, like so. Guide it all the way in until it snaps down here like this, and you'll get a clicking sound. So I'm going to do that inside the cabinet here. Loose this up a little bit so I can get a better angle on this. Okay. I'm going to put it in the upper corner and we're going to push up the tab and hopefully it will slide right in. It did. I'm going to angle the switch downward. I don't know if you can see that from here. Make it a nice solid click. So this is clapper left. Now we're going to do flapper right. Same thing with this one. Going to, like I said again, I'll show you the insertion because it can be a little tricky. So what we're looking for is down here is a little tooth. You shove it in the hole, shove the little pin in there, rotate it forward around this, and you're going to lock it into the top top hole here and lock it in place so again it goes in place I'm gonna put it in loosely I'll tighten it a little bit later and like I said I'm gonna put in the bottom piece careful not to break my Geek welding, aka soldering. Okay, now we're gonna shove it in. Now we're rotate it forward until it clicks. And we're gonna aim this switch in the same direction. So mine just facing the back or to the yeah, to the back of the cabinet. So that is flap right. Now I am gonna go out and uh, do some vacuuming on this thing. Uh, this is a closed unit. Uh, if this was my uh, computer side, um, the one that has the computer, I definitely would have vacuumed everything out or maybe even put a cloth underneath it to keep sawdust from getting in there. Uh, the nook is pretty enclosed, so nothing's really going to happen on that side. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put this thing together. So I have my power switch here, so I'm just going to turn that on. And here you can see the tops of this you can actually in this you can set it up to any hole you want um, the program that we're using uh, called visual pinball doesn't really care if you're joystick one or joystick two so I'm just going to put this together like I said we're doing this live so I don't know if this will actually work I tested parts of this but this is the real deal so I'm just going to pick two two holes in the center here. I may end up moving it. And I'll show you how to map this. This is a, this is the next thing. So, actually, you know what? We're going to rotate these switches downward just to keep them from getting hit by something down here. Okay. I am not sure if I pointed this out before, but I'll point it out again just to make sure that we're on the same page here. When you're soldering these, or when you're connecting them, you want to connect the top and the upper. The lower stays the disconnect. There's nothing goes on that. Um, or if you have it with the button up, it's the one on the very bottom and the next up. Okay, uh, the software that we're using. Well, actually, let's do it this way. I'm gonna change my camera angle. Like I said, I'm gonna clean this up here. 
make sure we don't hit anything. I think I may have found a small problem with the joystick here. That might be an issue. So, anyway, that's what gets we're doing stuff live. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll figure this out. I may have to move the button forward. Uh, we'll see what I did here. Anyway, uh, what we need to do is we need to open up the control panel. And we want to type in joystick. Devices and printers. Yeah, we might be redoing this. I hope I didn't mess up too badly. We'll see how this goes. Okay, so you click on the joystick. Hardware. And you look at the controller. And you go to properties. Let's see here. Sorry about that. Input device. Right click, game controller settings. So mine's got two controllers because each one has the two uh, things. Let me move the camera over so we can see. Okay, so it really doesn't matter which one you pick, you'll figure out which one's actually connected. So you click okay here, right there. And what we should get is hopefully the joystick properties of this. Do the other one as well. Settings. Here we are. And let's use it advanced. No. It is, like I said, properties. So I'm going to do that and properties. Okay. So, like I said, there's two joysticks. This is actually the one that's not connected. So this, uh, sorry, this is the one that's connected. You can see that. And what is, so as I'm pressing the buttons here, you see different lights light up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick number two, because you can see if I hit this, my side flipper buttons, nothing happens. So we're gonna go and close this. Go to joystick number two and properties. And we're gonna see that flipper. I have to my settings here one more time. Let me see, I'm gonna pick a different side to so move them down. see where we are okay so this is that and and I'm gonna make a shortened video of this that actually goes through this whole process okay here we are again okay you can see now when I move the joystick here, nothing happens. What I do have to figure out is why I'm not getting anything on the actual controllers. I could have a short. So um, pretty much what you're doing is uh, we're gonna do a part two of this, but this is it for the moment.